Good afternoon, everyone. We're here today to discuss the progress made to date and our next affirmative steps to address the opioid crisis in Massachusetts. When Governor Baker assembled his opioid working group two plus years ago, he tasked us to disrupt the status quo and to act with urgency. The opioid crisis was long in making and was a race against time. Yesterday, the Department of Public Health released its third quarterly report on overdose deaths, which shows opioid-related overdose deaths in Massachusetts declined by an estimated 10 percent in the first nine months of this year as compared to the first nine months of 2016. This is the second consecutive quarterly report estimating a decline. These numbers, while positive, remind us of how much suffering continues and how much we continue, we must continue to double down our efforts to utilize data and best practices to inform our strategies and to combat stigma, social isolation, and the other consequences of this chronic disease. The package that the governor and the lieutenant governor will discuss builds on prevention, intervention, treatment, and recovery strategies by targeting high-risk populations, continuing to improve prescriber practices, and addressing specific barriers and gaps in treatment. We build on the momentum we've created to date and push forward with new initiatives to continue to bend the trend of opioid deaths, to provide pathways for treatment and recovery, and to give hope to individuals and their loved ones. Our administration, working with our colleagues in the legislature and others, made it a team effort to take a big swing at dozens of reforms and legislation to fight this crisis. And we're seeing some progress. And we're also pleased that some of those efforts are being used as a national blueprint to help other states. But after roughly two years of implementing new programs, collecting data, and maintaining an ongoing dialogue with our stakeholders, our administration is today announcing the second initiative package, which has three major parts. This package takes a targeted approach to increase access to treatment and recovery services, strengthen education and prevention efforts, and as part three of this, I'm going to send two letters to Washington this week, one to the Acting Secretary of Health and Human Services and the other to the Attorney General. And in summary, we're requesting more flexibility to dispense Narcan, to approve new tools to detect fentanyl, and to expand access to medication-assisted treatment. Since 2015, our administration has added more than 1,100 treatment beds, including 680 substance use adult treatment beds and certified more than 162 sober homes, accounting for over 2,100 beds. And with the CARE Act, we're seeking to ensure that these beds are put to good use to reach more people suffering with substance use disorder. This bill focuses on two initiatives to improve access to treatment. First, ensuring that our treatment beds meet the needs of individuals with substance use disorder. And second, expanding access to treatment by creating three new pathways in emergency rooms. There are several factors continuing, contributing to the downward momentum of the opioid and heroin epidemic. And the medical community plays a critical role in fighting and preventing the spread of this public health crisis. Massachusetts is seeing progress by sharpening the use of certain tools, like the prescription monitoring program, to increase accountability, improve information sharing, and track prescriptions more closely. We passed the first in the nation seven-day pill limit on first prescriptions, required prescribers to check the prescription monitoring program, and required training in pain management and addiction. Still, prescription opi opioids remain highly addictive and dangerous, are in some cases still being overprescribed, and the CARE Act focuses on collecting more data, reducing fraud, and better enforcement of existing laws. The CARE Act will call for six changes to prevent opioid misuse, starting with a mandate for all prescribers to convert to using secure electronic prescribing by 2020. As parents, teachers, and government officials, we have an obligation to support and protect our kids, our children. And this opioid crisis is calling for a whole new line of defense to prevent addiction before it starts. Just as, just as we have worked through our school systems to educate our children from elementary school through college on the dangers of alcohol and drugs, it is imperative that we increase addiction prevention awareness for opioids through a coordinated 
and structured approach for every school level. And today, separate from our legislation, we are announcing immediate administrative actions to support prevention education in our schools. First, our administration has invested in, in a training program for school nurses called the Screening Brief Intervention and Referral to Treatment, also known as SBIRT, and have trained nearly 4,000 school staff in 283 of our school districts, resulting in 22,000 students screened. Recognizing the value in taking a model that works and replicating it, today we are announcing an expansion for SBIRT to reach more schools and more students and allow for interventions with students at risk. Next, in consultation with state public and private colleges and universities, this administration will also develop a plan for all incoming college students to receive opioid awareness and prevention education as, stand, as a standard part of their orientation. As our final administrative action, we will convene a working group with executive officers of education and health and human services to focus on ways to strengthen students' understanding of health behaviors, prevent substance use disorder, and assist students and families in recovery. As school nurses, we, along with our other professional school health colleagues, have seen how this devastating disease impacts our students and families. As the trusted health care providers in school, the school nurse, school counselors, school social workers, and school psychologists and others uniquely are uniquely positioned to talk with students about substance use. We can identify behaviors that lead to unhealthy substance use beginning at an early age. Adolescent screening, brief intervention, and referral to treatment, or SBIRT screenings, are currently being performed in schools throughout the Commonwealth using the evidence-based validated craft tool tool with overwhelming success. We've already seen the many benefits of performing these expert screenings in schools. These one-on-one -on -one private conversations have allowed us to identify early risk behaviors and intervene before more significant problems begin. With the additional support from Governor Baker, Lieutenant Governor Polito, and their administration, school nurses and other school health professionals will be able to continue to build on these critical supports, prevention and intervention strategies, and educational programs to help students remain healthy and safe well into their future.